Hey, we're Aaron and Jennifer Smith with Marriage After God. Helping you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And today we're going to see what we can learn from the Lord's Prayer. Welcome to the Marriage After God podcast, where we believe that marriage was meant for more than just happily ever after. I'm Jennifer, also known as Unveiled Wife. And I'm Aaron, also known as Husband Revolution. We have been married for over a decade. And so far, we have four young children. We have been doing marriage ministry online for over seven years through blogging and social media. With the desire to inspire couples to keep God at the center of their marriage, encouraging them to walk in faith every day. We believe that Christian marriage should be an extraordinary one, full of life, love, and power that can only be found by chasing after God. Together. Thank you for joining us on this journey as we chase boldly after God's will for our life together. This is Marriage After God. Hey, thanks for joining us for another episode of the Marriage After God podcast. Uh, We're excited to have you. We're also excited about this topic, just talking about prayer, talking about the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Before we get into the topic, I want to invite you to leave us a star rating and review. We cherish every single one of those reviews. And those reviews help uh, new people find the podcast. It helps the algorithms in the podcast apps to show our podcast to more people, the more people that leave reviews. So we'd love to invite you to do that. If you haven't left us a review yet, we'd love to have you do that. If you have left us a review, thank you. We'd also like to invite you guys to go get your free download that Aaron and I created just for you. It's called uh, Date Night Conversation Starters, and it's 52 conversation starters for you to take on your next date night. Um, so it's really easy to get. Just go to date night And uh, we just want to also be encouraging you guys that if you're not making date night a priority to do that um, with prioritizing date night, even if you don't get out of the house, you just make that time a priority. It's just a, a great time for you guys to be working on your marriage, cultivating that friendship in marriage, laughing together, playing together. But um, I would say most importantly, talking to each other. And so we created this free download for you to um, just inspire that conversation to happen. And um, we just made it for you guys. So go to datenightconversations.com to get that today. So in today's topic, we are going to uh, take a piece, uh, a few scriptures from the Bible and just break it down and talk about it. And it's specifically going to be the Lord's Prayer. It's probably the most famous prayer ever said. And it's by Jesus himself. And it's when he gave his uh, Sermon on the Mount, it was a part of it. And he was teaching uh, the people listening, his disciples and those that were there. He said, when you pray, pray like this. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it'd be awesome if we just kind of discussed, we broke down the prayer, broke down what he said, just see what we can draw from it for our own lives to um, encourage us in our prayer life, encourage you in your prayer life. Mm -hmm. And there's some cool stuff in it because it's not what we should pray. It's how we should pray. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of people like to recite the, the the Lord's Prayer, but there's nothing wrong with that because Jesus said it. It's a good prayer. Uh, but he's giving us a, a template, a way of thinking when we're coming to the Lord in prayer mm-hmm. and what it, what we're actually doing. So, uh, it, you know, the Lord's Prayer is actually is only it's only recorded in two Gospels, uh, Matthew and Luke. And uh, it's a it's a part of a large discourse. It's part of the um Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. He talks about tons of things, Uh, you know, marriage and uh, giving and, uh, you know, the praying and all these things. And he's teaching the people God's purpose for these things, you know, because they were, they all grew up with the law. Mm -hmm. But then now Jesus is good. He's like, this is what my heart truly is about these things. And often they're much deeper than even the law on the surface said, but it's a really incredible sermon. It's probably the most sermon ever spoken by Jesus himself. Uh, but we're going to focus on just this this prayer, the, what's called the Lord's Prayer. I'm so excited about this episode, you guys. And I think, I think mainly because prayer is such an essential and vital part of, you know, a Christian's life. Mm-hmm. And it should be. It should be a priority. Um, but everyone listening, like there's so many different places that we're in, so many different mm-hmm. journeys that people are walking with God right now today. And so some people, you know, might have an awesome prayer life, but they'll still get a ton out of hearing uh, Mm -hmm. this broken down piece by piece. And then others may be just encouraged to evaluate their life and saying, man, I'm not praying. I should be praying on a daily basis. And so um, I'm just encouraged thinking about all the different people that are listening right now and how they'll be impacted and inspired by today's topic and and just looking at the Lord's prayer and how Jesus prayed. And I want to be vulnerable. One of the reasons I wanted to do this episode is, uh, you know, we talk about prayer a lot, 
and what it means to us and that we encourage Christians to be praying because that's what the Bible tells us. Mm-hmm. It commands us to pray. Uh, but to be honest, uh, I mean, you need to work on our prayer life and not work on it as in like trying to get closer to God and trying to work for our salvation. We're, I want to get, I want to be closer to God and I want to be better in my prayer life, not for just me, but for my family's sake, for your sake, for my relationship with God's sake, for my children's sake, for my church's sake. And, and so I wanted to be encouraged in this as well, Mm -hmm. uh, as we are growing in our prayer life Mm -hmm. and seeking the Lord in deeper and deeper ways. Yeah. So uh, I guess I'll start by just reading it. It's found in Matthew 6, 5 through 15. Uh, this is the longest version of the, of the Lord's Prayer. And we'll start in verse 5. It says, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who is in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray like this, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation for, but deliver us from the, from evil. For if you forgive others, their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, their trespasses, neither you, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So I just wanted to start by reading the whole piece of it for context. He starts off with talking about how she prayed. Then he gives an example of what the kind of prayer is. And then he says some pretty (laughs) heavy things at the end. The first thing that stands out to me is it's such a um, iconic piece of scripture. Like you hear it Mm -hmm. recited, you know, on holidays or in movies. And it's just something that feels so familiar. Yeah. But sometimes with familiarity, there's, we lose, we lose intimacy. Mm. Um, This happens in our marriage. You get so familiar, so comfortable, you kind of forget about the intricacies and the the yearning and the longing and the digging in and the figuring out and the learning. Sometimes even the simple things. Yeah. Like knowing what your favorite Ice fill in is. the blank is. Yeah. yeah. It's like we we there's a part of um intimacy in relationship that's a constant, mm-hmm. like constant growing closer to each other. And um, yeah, we don't want to skip over that. And that's why, even though this is iconic and it's been, you know, we, everyone could probably recite most of it just from hearing it so much, but there's beauty in going back to the scriptures Mm -hmm. things. And I struggle with this because I like, Oh, I already read that. I already know it. And then I'm like, I go back and read. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I've never read this before. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like when I, when I read it, um, things that I've read in the past. Mm -hmm. So anyways, we want to like dig in and just let's, uh, get more intimate with this this prayer, what Jesus is actually teaching the people on the, on the Mount of Olives. Uh, And so in verse five, it says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. So first thing I get from this, the word hypocrite stands out. So when we pray, let's not be hypocrites. Let's not say one thing and do another. So Mm -hmm. I pray and ask God to give me peace and patience And then I run out and I go and be frantic and hectic and and Mm -hmm. rash and harsh and angry and I'm impatient and, and I'm, I'm praying for one thing and expecting God to just like make me into a robot and cause me to be that way Mm -hmm. rather than taking the opportunities he gives me to be patient Mm -hmm. and then say, okay, Lord, thank you for giving me what you've already given me. So I know there's many other ways that we're hypocrites, but. Well, the thing that comes to my mind is how, when the setting um, makes it easier for you to show your admiration or love for God, but the moment the environment changes or that setting changes, how are you? Because God can sniff out an untrue heart. God Mm -hmm. knows whether you are truly devoted to him or if you have a heart of prayer. Um, For example, if you're like in a Bible study or at church and you're praying because you're being prompted to, or because the setting, you know, draws you closer in that way, Mm -hmm. like let's say through worship or something like that, that's great. What happens during the week? Mm-hmm. When it the setting is chaotic or yeah. um or or mundane feeling or you know you just you have a lot of things on your mind are you still stopping to just pray mm-hmm. like when I think of being a hypocrite when it comes to prayer like I don't know that's what comes to my well, mind. Well, I also think uh, so. Hypocrisy is, is uh, thinking one way but or saying one thing but thinking another. Mm-hmm. So like if I say I believe. 
but then I, in my heart and in my actions, I don't believe that's right. hypocrisy. So if we're praying to God, mm -hmm. you know, and James says, if you pray and do not doubt, mm -hmm. are we praying and saying, Lord, you know, cause this thing to happen in me or, you know, work in my husband's heart or my wife's heart or, hey, you know, help me in these circumstances. Do we actually believe God's hearing us? Mm -hmm. First of all, like do I, when I pray, do I believe God's hearing me? Do, or do I think I pray and then I walk away and be like, well, I don't know why he would listen to me anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not good enough to be heard or that's a hypocritical way of thinking of saying one thing, praying, acting is one way, but believing another way. Yeah. And so I think that we, when we come to the Lord, we need to believe yeah. that he hears us and he talks about this. Here's another thing that I think of is um, just in our relationship as parents to our children, if we're teaching them to pray in every circumstance, you know, when they get hurt or mm -hmm. when, you know, different for different seasons and different situations, we're telling them to pray, but yet we're not doing that. Yeah. They can sniff out hypocrisy too. And eventually when they're old enough, they'll be able to call it out. And then another thing with hypocrisy is, uh, and I've seen this in my life, I have this sin over here that I haven't have like quite repented of mm. and I'm like hiding it. Mm -hmm. But then because of the guilt and shame or whatever, I'm trying to pray and like, I'm trying to draw closer to God in my own flesh. And I know a lot of people do this, like, I'm going to read the Bible more. I'm going to go pray more. And I'm trying to really just personally cleanse my own shame mm -hmm. instead of just running to my father and, and repenting yeah. <laughs> or repenting to the person I need to. And that's hypocrisy, going to God and asking for one thing. And he's like, well, what about this thing over here that mm -hmm. I'm already prompting your heart mm -hmm. to do? Like, are you even listening to me? So why would you, why, why would you listen to this other thing if yeah. I was to respond to you? If you haven't listened to this thing over here, yeah, I'm he, convicting you. He knows you our to, hearts. <laughs> he does. So come in the Lord without um, hypocrisy in our hearts. So is our heart's desire to walk with God mm -hmm. throughout the day, not just when we need something. Mm -hmm. So like, are we going to God? Like, hey, like, let's go to God because he's our father. Yeah. You know, um, and not just to be seen spiritually or religiously, mm -hmm. but like it says the closet and that's not the only place we're supposed to pray. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is are you going like when you're at home by yourself, do you have, and this is something that convicts me. Do I pray? Mm -hmm. Like, do I honestly say, Lord, like what's going on right now? Where am I at? What I, I need your strength right now because I'm weak. Mm -hmm. Not just when people are around and when I'm at church, you know, when it sounds good, but like personally, I, have a personal relationship with the father. Yeah. You know, when you brought up um, the unrepentant sin, I'm just wondering how often unrepentant sin keeps people all together from praying oh, yeah. because they feel that shame or they feel maybe they don't want to give that sin up. So they're just going to avoid it altogether. Um, there's lots of different reasons why they would do that. So maybe just as an encouragement for those listening that um, if this is tugging on your heart right now, I'd say just <laughs> stop, drop and pray. And it means and the go Father there. loves you. Don't be intimidated <laughs> yeah. by it. Don't be fearful. Don't don't uh, avoid it because this is important, you guys. Well, and I'll say this, the, the pain that you feel in, in knowing that you must repent of something is real, but it's much less painful than not repenting mm -hmm. and what will happen in your life because of the unrepentant sin. Mm -hmm. And so, that, and that's where I land in my life. Like, do I want to repent and reveal my my sin and be like revealed for who I truly was acting like, or do I want to be healed? Mm -hmm. Right. Cause James tells us, you know, confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. Mm -hmm. I want to be healed. And that's, it's painful to do, but it's much less painful than letting it live and grow and turn into death, which yeah. is the Bible teaches. Yeah. So let's go to verse six. Okay. It says, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Yeah. So I kind of, talked about this, like, do we have a real relationship with, with God? Mm -hmm. Like is prayer something that happens when we're even alone mm -hmm. and in secret and it's for the sake of hearing from the Lord and speaking to the Lord, mm -hmm. right? It's, that's what it's for. I remember early on in our marriage, um, uh, it took a while for me to understand that this was even a thing that I did, but, uh, I would text you, call you like during, mm -hmm. uh, when we were both at work or during the day when we weren't together, um, or even at night. And I would ask you, to pray for me because whatever I was going through, and I still think that we should do, communicate in that way. Like you yeah. should know what's going on in my life and I should receive that prayer. But what I wasn't doing was, but what I wasn't doing was praying for that thing for myself. And like you said, do we have, you know, a, a, a personal private prayer life mm -hmm. where we're going to God? And I would say that I was actually using you to do that for me because mm -hmm. you would respond right away. Yeah, of course. And you would pray for me and then I'd feel satisfied or fulfilled without even having to go to God myself. Um, 
But then eventually he got a hold of my heart and yeah. made me realize what was going on. Well, and this is something that convicts me. Uh, you know, do we seek out time to be alone to pray as Jesus often did? Mm-hmm. Jesus gave us this example. Like often he would leave the crowds and he went off to be by himself up on a hill early in the morning or late at night, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes all throughout the night mm-hmm. to be to, to be with the Lord. And I want that that craving. I want that hunger mm-hmm. to, to get to a point and realize like, man, I haven't communed with God yet mm-hmm. today. And like, I feel like I've starved myself all day. I want more and more of that mm-hmm. feeling to draw me to him. Yeah. Something that I've been um, going through is just having a bunch of little kids at home and mm-hmm. con- the constant needs and demands of that, which is beautiful. And I, I truly do love motherhood. Um, but I was craving that time with God and feeling like, but I can't just get alone um, until yeah. I realized I just needed to wake up earlier you know, and get that time in before they came in. It was sacrifice. Before that time, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it changes my heart. Like it's, it prepares my heart even for the day with my children. And so just as an encouragement to moms who maybe heard you say that, I just need to get away and be with Jesus is we absolutely still do. And sometimes it's in the midst of the kids and we, you know, encourage them to do quiet time while we break for prayer. And other times it's sacrificing that sleep and getting up a little bit earlier, Mm. staying up late to do it. Verse seven and eight. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Uh, So uh, first thing that stands out is we know God and he knows us. Mm -hmm. So he lets us talk to him like we know him, Mm -hmm. which is cool. You know, because a lot of people think like, why should I even pray? Like he already knows everything. But that's like, think about being a, a, you know, as a parent's. There's plenty of things that we know that our kids don't know we know mm-hmm. about them, mm-hmm. things that they need, things that they want, things that they're going through. I still want my son to come to me and tell me. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if I know already. I don't tell my son, don't tell me, I already know. I say, oh, what's going on? Yeah. And I want him to tell me because it cultivates his relationship with me. Mm-hmm. And it builds trust and it builds love and connection. And uh, so that's a small thing. And I think God's bigger than this, but. I think for me, um, in my own walk with God, learning how to be intimate in my relationship with him, he showed me that um, because I I would, I would consider him like all knowing. So why do I need to tell him everything that's going on right now when he sees and hears and knows everything? Um, But he showed me that it's an offering of my heart It's me giving it to him Mm -hmm. and it's different. It's different than him just knowing and seeing. It's me actually like opening up my hands and my heart saying, here, I want you to, I want you to know about this. Yeah. And I just think that's a really beautiful way of communion with God. And well, it's relationship. Like you said, building up that trust. Uh, So another thing about this that I think about is we don't need to make our prayers wordy or religious. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not using the right words when I pray to God. Well, like, you know, we should be, respectful and reverent to God, but there is no like special incantations to get God to do something. That's not what prayer is. Yeah. But I do feel like he, he said this because he created us and he knows our beings and he knows that there's probably a part of us that wants to say the right thing Uh in the right time and in the right way. And we do desire that. And so I, I just want to encourage people that don't, don't, um, Keep yourself from praying just because you feel like you don't have the right words to say. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, there's plenty of scripture in the Bible that have already come up with the words. Yeah, <laughs> just go pray scripture of your life. That's like read idea. read the Psalms out loud and say, Lord, like make this real in my oh, life. Oh man! So I have this um, journal um, journal Bible, and so there's the lines on the side. And there are so many times where I just say Amen or I say Yes, I want this, or I'll literally copy the sentence mm-hmm. and say Me too. Um, and that's basically what what it. I mean, I'm writing the prayer out, but. Well, and this tells us God knows us already. He already Mm -hmm. knows what we need before we ask it. Yeah. And there's another place in the Bible that says, when we don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit prays for us. Yeah. That which should encourage us like, Lord, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to be quiet and still and engaged with you. And uh, there may not even be a word that comes out of my mouth Mm -hmm. that we can actually sit in silence, anticipating to hear from the Lord, Mm -hmm. which is still prayer. So that, that, I mean, sitting in silence, not empty, but like dwelling on things that God's done, dwelling mm-hmm. on who he is, dwelling on scriptures we know, and listen, waiting to hear from the Lord is prayer. 
Okay, but how hard is it to do that in this fast paced, busy life that we all well, live? As long as I get all the red notifications off my phone, I'm good. I can. Oh, man. That, yeah, we is get, that even possible? We anymore? get distracted <laughs> by everything because yeah. the enemy does not want us waiting on the Lord. Yeah. And having we have to find time to strength slow down. renewed and rising up on wings of eagles and all these things that the word says when we wait on the Lord. Yeah. I think uh, just as an encouragement for um, married couples, because that's what we are, we're a marriage podcast. <laughs> um, what? I know. <laughs> when it comes to praying, especially when we're talking about not, you know, you, you don't need to have lofty words or mm-hmm. express yourself a very specific way. Um, don't let that ideal keep you from praying over your spouse because it can seem like an intimidating thing, especially if you're not used mm-hmm. to doing it. Even if it's clumsy in the beginning. Hey, do it anyway. The Lord loves it. <laughs> and it will bless your spouse and it will bless you. And uh, it will it will just grow that desire in your heart to want to pray for each other. So mm-hmm. that's just my little side encouragement of uh, be praying for each other, even out loud, mm-hmm. please. <laughs> so that was a great encouragement. Yep. Uh, so verse nine broke it up into two parts. So verse nine A says, pray then like this. Our Father in Heaven, and I wanted to stop on this. And I've read some doc, or commentaries on this, and I've, you know, just when you just read it, it says Father, and we've always heard this. But there's something so special about Jesus saying, "Pray like this, Our Father." He, there's so many names and titles God Jesus could have used for God, and this is just a couple of them: Almighty God, Deliverer, Creator, Judge, King, Lawgiver, Righteous One, Shepherd, Yahweh. He could have started with any of those. Hmm but he said, father, he appeals to him as father. And when you hear Jesus talk about God throughout the scriptures, he says, I only do that, which my father has told me to do. I follow my father. I only speak what my father says. Mm. I do what my father, I'm about my father's business. He's a son and he, and he talks to his father. And then he teaches us because we are sons and daughters of God if we have accepted his son, Jesus, mm-hmm. right? We're, we get to come to him as children and we get to say, Father. And I think it's in Romans, it says, the spirit within us cries out, Abba, Father, which is like a, a Hebrew way of saying Dada, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And he's our father. We get to approach him as children who are in the home. Not We're not beggars outside the home. We're not strangers knocking on the door. We're not, uh, we're that, none of those. We're in the home as children comforted by a dad who mm-hmm. loves us m- more than we could ever imagine, who does everything to protect us and take care of us and give us what we need. That's the person we're talking to. Mm-hmm. And so if you have a broken relationship with your father, if you never had a father, what's beautiful is you have the perfect father. Yeah. And for generations, this truth has comforted orphans. This truth has comforted people who come from broken homes, but you got to receive it. You got to say, oh, he is my father and I'm going to listen to his words and I'm going to trust him. And so I thought that was beautiful that uh, Jesus starts off with telling us like, pray to your father. You know, yes, he is the creator. Yes, he is the king. Yes, he is sovereign. Yes, he is the judge, but he's your dad. That's really cool. Um, how would you encourage, because you brought you brought up this, you know, uh, broken relationships and people with earthly fathers here that maybe haven't um, d- done a great job at parenting or, mm-hmm. you know, fulfilling that role for them. So how do those people um, see God with a clear lens? Like, how, well, how would you pray, encourage them? Start, ask God to clean their vision mm-hmm. of, because right now they might be into seeing God through the lens of their own father mm-hmm. and their own relationships. Identifying God as this person that's like yeah, my... He's distant father, or yeah. he's harsh mm-hmm. or he's uh, abusive or he's whatever the words that you associate with father. God's none of those things. Mm-hmm. God is God mm-hmm. and he's good. And so, uh, you know, the Bible tells us to be that we're transformed by the renewing of our minds. Renew your mind in the truth of what the word says about God, your father, mm-hmm. and, st- and and work on and say, ask the Holy Spirit to change you and, and stop the pattern of applying your experience with your father and your relationship to mm-hmm. him and let God be God and let your earthly father be him. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I would say that. That's really good. That's really encouraging. Um, okay. So moving on then to the second part of this. So verse nine B says, hallowed be your name. And hallowed means 
honor is holy. So like your name is holy. So it's saying when we pray, yes, he's our father, but recognize he is holy. So babe, can our kids just come up to us and talk to us however they want? No, I I correct them. No, that doesn't mean we don't love them. You can't be disrespectful. You can't. Now, if my son comes up to me and is disrespectful, I don't just kick him out of the house. Right? No. So all of these things are true at the same time. Mm-hmm. He sh- he's not allowed to talk disrespectful to us, but even if he does, we don't kick him out. Mm-hmm. Right? We train him. We say, actually, how you just talked to us was not right. Mm-hmm. Right? And if it happens perpetually, there's discipline, there's correction, there's, 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 we help him learn how to talk to us appropriately so that he can learn how to talk to God. Mm-hmm. So again, there's a, there's this part of, we need to rev- have a reverence for our Holy Father. Mm -hmm. He's holy and he's perfect and he's good. And even if we're angry, we don't come to him and just throw at him whatever we think he deserves in that moment because he hasn't given us what we want. Mm -hmm. No, actually we get to come to him and we need to, we get to lay down our emotions at his altar. Say, okay, Lord, I am so mad right now and I don't understand why this is happening, but help me understand. Yeah. Like if my son came to me and, and he was mad because we said something, but he said, I know you want me to do this thing, but I'm so angry and I'm so emotional. I don't, under, I don't get it. And if he said it with a reverence and an honor, would I not get down on my knees and be like, I know you don't get it. I'm, and I'm sorry you feel this way, but this is what's right. Yeah. This is what's good. I do think though that with parenting, especially little ones, um, when we see that expression of, you know, disrespect or lack of reverence, it's our job to ask them, you know, what what's motivating this? Where's mm. your heart at? What Are you what is it that's me right now? Well, yeah, what is this? Yeah. And and also help them identify our role and position in their life and what God has um mm-hmm. given us to do for for their sake. And we also use our relationship with God as that identifier, like how we're supposed to be with God. they they should be with us. And um it's just a really beautiful thing when you get to use the gospel and scripture to show your child and teach them Mm -hmm. what it's like to honor God. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So moving on to verse 10 a, so verse 10 is broken up into a few parts and verse 10 a, this is really cool because in the progression of his petitions in this, this is the first petition, right? So, you know, we had God, or we had Jesus kind of talking to God and presenting who he is. And then the first petition, the first thing that he asks of God is your kingdom come. (laughs) And the Bible tells us to seek first the kingdom of heaven and Mm -hmm. all of the things that we need that he's about to pray about, we will have Mm -hmm. because God knows what we need. He says this in the prayer and it lines up perfectly with what we're told about seeking first the kingdom of heaven. Your kingdom come. Do we have a longing in our hearts for his kingdom to come? Or is our first longing coming to me? Like, why haven't you given me this thing yet? Mm -hmm. where's that promise you had for me, right? We have this, are we coming to him with the, with these earthly, yes, we have earthly things we need, but we were just told God knows what they are. Mm -hmm. Or is our first petition to the Lord, Lord, how is your kingdom coming through my life, in my family, Mm -hmm. to those around me? Like, is there someone that I could be petitioning for? Like, Lord, reveal yourself to them, Yeah, which is the kingdom come. So when it says your kingdom come, Uh, Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was talking about himself. He's like, repent. The Messiah is here. I'm here. I'm literally about to take the sins of the world. (laughs) That's what he was saying. And then he says right here, your kingdom come. So our our first petition, our first posture in all of our prayers, Jennifer, we we just talked about this recently. You know, there was a prayer about all the, the, the tumult that's happening in the world right now, the chaos. And you had, you desired that there would be peace. And I started praying and what came out of my mouth was like, I pray that this opportunity would be, would draw people to you, Lord. I pray that Christians would be good examples. And I was, and, and she, not that you weren't caring about these things, but your first thought was the peace in the situation. But when you heard me praying that you're like, oh, like there's a bigger thing that we could be praying for. Um, And you do care about those things. Um, Just the Holy Spirit was leading me to pray that way. But do we care about that? Mm -hmm. Do we want God's kingdom to be revealed in the hearts of men and women. As you were talking, I was just thinking about something that happened to me um, when I, in the morning time, when I am praying, I'll often journal my prayers. So I'll write them out. Mm-hmm. And um, I caught myself, you know, starting out, dear God, and then jumping into a very quick request. 
And I can like now I can feel myself wanting to go there first and being like having to write out some Mm -hmm. thank yous and gratitude. And sometimes that's the whole prayer because I realize that it's not for me. Well, and that's what it's not about you. But my flesh is so selfish, even still after walking with God all these years and I, and I see it on paper and I go, Oh, you know? Yeah. And it's not that it's terrible. It's just God's changing my heart and he's showing me that uh, my heart needs to align with his, your kingdom come. That's such a beautiful and short statement, but it's this desire for his will to be done. And for it's a, it's really also a desire for us to align our hearts with his. Yeah. And it's a saying, it's not about us. It's about you, Lord. Yeah. Um, In uh, marriage after God, uh, we, we ask the question, are you building your kingdom? Like in your marriage, are you guys mm-hmm. working for yourselves or are you building together? Are you building his kingdom? And right, I love that. We, we all could have our own kingdoms. Yeah. I mean, in, in essence, in our homes, in our world around us, yeah. what we're building and what we've controlled. Uh, but it this, goes back to those daily choices. Yeah, and Jesus and, shows us, he's like, it's about him, yeah. your kingdom. And then verse 10 B, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. Uh, this goes back to like, what did Jesus do when he was in the garden? He was about to go to the cross and he said, Lord, may this cup pass my lips. And he's talking about this cup of wrath, what mm-hmm. was about to happen. And then he said, nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours. And he said that three times. So even got Jesus, the God man, right? <laughs> had his own will that he wanted, but you know what he did? He submitted his will yeah. to the father's, right? It's not sinful to have desires and a will. It is sinful, sinful to pursue those over God's will. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So Jesus submitted his will to the father yeah. and he said, not my will be done, but yours, which is the prayer he says right here, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's his will, not ours. Mm-hmm. Our, pr- our prayers are not intended to change God since God can't change. James 1.17 says this, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Like he doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. So our job isn't trying to change God's heart. Like, hey, this situation, God, that you want to happen, can we not have that happen? Let's just, uh..." no, your will, Lord. Like, is this something that I need to change in? Is the situation that I'm enduring right now, is there something that I need to be uh, be revealed and understand about it so that I can walk better in it Mm -hmm. and and receive it with thanksgiving? So his will, not ours. Uh, so we want to receive it in verse John five fourteen. it says, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Mm-hmm. So I could be like, Lord, I really want that, you know, Aston Martin, you know, <laughs> the a car. It's like, you know, I, I just know Lord that that's going to just be so good for me. <laughs> and God's like, well, that's not what is in my will for you right now or ever. <laughs> so am I praying in God's will or am I praying in my will? Are we asking for his things? Like, Lord, what do you want right now in my life, in this person's life? Um, So a good example uh, about this, praying it for our will. We've been trying to teach our son this. Our son gets bad dreams. I grew up getting bad dreams all the time. I did too. And I still get them. They don't affect me anymore, but like I get them. I'll wake up and be like, well, that was a scary dream. (laughs) Um, But he gets them and he comes to, comes to it at, comes to us at night, fearful and uh, emotional. We pray for him and it breaks my heart. And I want to pray like, Lord, just take these dreams away. Yeah. Is God totally capable of taking the dreams away? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can give him like dreams of unicorns and rainbows every night if you wanted to, because God's God, but he doesn't. Okay. So is, is that mean God's not answering the prayer? No, it's just possible that God has a will for my son that goes beyond him just being comforted at night. Yeah. Right. Not that God doesn't want to comfort, God is a God of comfort. He actually came to me and he had his father comfort him. I got to comfort my son. So that was an actually a beautiful thing that built our unity and connection. Um, But what are some other things that God might have for our son in these bad dreams? Well, one of them would be so to be comforted by me, but also to build character, like that he learns that these dreams don't have any effect on him, that he can actually control his emotions in them, that he can learn to trust God. Doesn't have any effect on him as in... They're not real, right? but it does affect him like emotionally. And, and No, but when we have those opportunities to be emotional, what do we get to do? We go to God and he we gets have to, self-control. And we, so we teach him like, Elliot, yeah. next time, like when you have one of these, wake up and pray to God, yeah. say, God, will you comfort me right mm-hmm. now? 
Will you give me peace right now? And just know that he's there. So God's will is that my son learns to lean on him. Yeah. As Paul was told, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Something you can't control, that's a weakness, right? So we there's other things at play here and we want to be praying in God's will. Like I, my prayer for my son is that he would learn to lean on God in these times, that he would learn to, to not be so um, paralyzed by fear, mm-hmm. that he would learn to be strengthened. And like, you know what, Lord, that was scary, but thank you, Lord, for making, it was just a dream, yeah, yeah. like trusting. I know you're just talking about dreams, but I feel like this is such a big encouragement for parents listening right now that even when we don't know what to do in those situations for our kids, because we even feel helpless, but w- we know where to send them. We know where mm-hmm. to guide them. We know where to take them to, to receive that comfort and clarity and encouragement. Mm-hmm. And it's the Lord. And so I would just encourage parents to to do that, to be praying with your kids, for your kids, but also encouraging your kids to be praying themselves. Right. And if we always just pray for comfort, like, Lord, take away this pain. Lord, heal my headache. Lord, you know, take away the dreams. Lord, if that's all we're ever praying, that doesn't mean he's never going to answer those things. And there's nothing wrong right. in asking that. But if, my, if our prayers are around character and what God wants to do in us, like, you know what, dreams are going to come, son, or these bad things are going to come, or you're going to be sick. But you know what? We have a father that loves us and he can heal us. Doesn't mean he will. He's but you sovereign. know what? Even if he doesn't heal us, yeah. he's good. Yeah. And we can run to him and we can say, Lord, I'm so, I'm in pain right now. Will mm-hmm. you comfort me? Will you give me your words to, to, to continue to meditate on so that I can realize that this pain is temporary and mm-hmm. that one day I'll be with you. And so those are the things that we encourage. And you know what? Those prayers get answered. They do when we pray that way. So our, our children actually see prayers getting, getting answered. So let's go on to verse 11. It says, give us this day our daily bread. So this is the first petition where it's asking for a normal thing. Everybody loves bread. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Get, got, need to have some gluten-free options in there. Just kidding. But what this made me think of is when we pray, we recognize that our true source of provision is not food. Yeah. Right? So I'm going to the Lord and saying, give us the, this day our daily bread. Is it, Am I literally asking God to like hand me a piece of bread? No, I'm, I'm asking to be provided for mm-hmm. by the provider. Right. But Jeho- you're acknowledging him as the provider. Yeah, Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. Yeah. That's one of his names. Mm-hmm. It's one of his titles. He loves it. He did it for the people of Israel. He gave them manna. That, he he right? did it for Abraham on, so, the, on the mount. So it's not our money or possessions or skill that take care of us. It's our father. Yeah. My kids, like they're taken care of by their father mm-hmm. and their mother, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Um, because I, I love this perspective because it, be, it can be looked at as uh, we can t- telling God what we need rather than honoring him for being a good provider. Mm-hmm. Like, oh God, I need this. I need this. And pretending or acting as if he doesn't even know, mm-hmm. but he does know. And honoring him saying, you are a good provider. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, scripture, 1 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, for who sees for, for who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received it, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? Like everything we have, we, we've received. Not a single person has uh, manifested anything from nowhere. Like we, we've received everything yeah. from somewhere and it all comes from God. In Deuteronomy uh, 8, 18, it says, you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it, as it is this day. So he was telling the people of Israel, he's like, don't forget that, the only reason you can even get wealth is because God gives God you the ability you. to. Yeah. Right. Uh, so the, the the Bible just over and over talks about He's our provider. He's our bread of life. He's our living water. He's all of the things that we need. Yeah. Um, and He provides the things that we need. Mm-hmm. And it's important to recognize that daily. <laughs> oh, also, one more thing I wanted to point out: this idea of of giving us this our, this day our daily bread. Uh, what do you get when you eat food? Full. Full. That's oh, true. That was- <laughs> yeah. But what do you get from it? Nutrients. Nutrients. Your body needs it. It's energy. Uh, we remember who our true sustenance and energy mm. is and where it comes from. Jesus said this, we don't live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And he was quoting that from uh, Deuteronomy 8.3, mm-hmm. right? He used that to battle the devil in, in, the, in truth. Like we don't, yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm hungry, but I don't live on bread alone. He even tells the disciples when they come to him and he's, and he's at the well after he talked to the uh, woman at the well. And they said, um, oh, we'll get you something. He's like, you have food. You are, I have food you don't even know about. 
<laughs> he does, he's so, Man, he's like, them, I'd be like, what? <laughs> they did. They said, they said, did someone give him bread? What is he talking about? <laughs> that, they literally said that. Uh, so anyways, uh, our daily bread, uh, verse 12. All right. So verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Yeah. I think it's important that he brings up debts. Yeah. We talk about debt a lot. Oh, we do. <laughs> it's important to be out of debt. Um, okay. This is basically coming to God with a truly repentant heart, right? Yeah. Like we, we, again, not being hypocrites, we're coming to him saying, you know, we, we want to long to hate what God hates mm -hmm. and to love what God loves. And so a part of that is we know that he forgives us mm -hmm. all of our debts. Just look at the story of the, of the wicked um, debtor, the w wicked servant who goes and he gets forgiven all of his debt, debt that he could never pay back. And then he goes out to Turns his servant. And being evil. Yeah. And, and he wants us to, he wants us to recognize that we are forgiven. Yeah. I think being able to pray this, this portion of this prayer requires humility oh, yeah. to the greatest degree. Mm -hmm. Well, because we come to him saying, well, we have nothing yeah. to give. Nothing to offer, but thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> truly, you know? for what what God did through Jesus on the cross. So it makes it very hard to come to prayer and say, God, just change this person. They are so, <laughs> we're like, <laughs> thank you, Lord, for changing me. And yeah. I just pray that this person's eyes are open to who you are mm -hmm. and that it's not me that's holding anything against them. I pray that. And there are so you know. many times that through prayer that our sin gets recognized even mm -hmm. if we haven't recognized it previously, like we, you know, like we just don't know. And then we start praying and God, God, because he is a good God reveals it to us. He's like, like oh, remember that time? Prayer changes us in that way. <laughs> yeah. Because of that humility. And then the last part I, I would uh, point out about this is it, it brings us into prayer with a, such a more pure way of praying for our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. that we're not coming with bitterness and anger and a root of like frustration or uh, holding anything against anyone because we would immediately feel so yeah. hypocritical Yeah, saying, Lord, yeah, I know I, I'm not doing this thing over here, but this person over here, like, no, we come and be like, oh man, mm -hmm. like I don't deserve anything you've given me. And I don't even know how I could hold on to this thing against yeah. so-and-so that we can actually come at, come and stand the gap for our brothers and sisters and people in our life and our enemies even mm -hmm. says pray for your enemies yeah. <laughs> right well like we we can have a such a, a more pure heart mm -hmm. for those that we're praying for because we're coming humbly all right moving on to the next one verse 13 and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil aaron do you want to clarify yeah, this one <laughs> um well a, a lot of people can take this and i <laughs> um I think the Pope was even trying to change this verse. I don't, I can't, I don't know if exactly, but this idea, it sounds like God's the one that leads us into temptation, but that's not what this is saying. It's, it, it's, we are led by our own desires into temptation. That's what yeah. the Bible teaches us. Yeah. And so what we're, we're, the petition to God is like, God, lead me in a way that I don't walk in my own temptations. Yeah. Like strengthen me. And then also show me and make it very clear the the ways of escape that you've promised you'd give me in those mm -hmm. temptations, mm -hmm. right? And so the prayer is that we're our minds are on His way, yeah, and His escapes. So I, I was just having a thought here that um, if you're praying that God lead you in a specific way, it doesn't mean that when you are tempted by sin and mm -hmm. choose sin that it's God's fault, right. because if someone's going to lead lead you, it's your responsibility to follow them. Mm -hmm. And God is leading us. He's leading us through his word. So if we're not yeah. reading his word and yet we're over here sinning and, and we're, by his spirit. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really important. To and know. just so everyone knows, James 1 13 says it very clearly. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God for God cannot be tempted with evil and he himself tempts no one. There so is. the answer is <laughs> God, this is not talking about God leading anyone into temptation. It's saying, lead me in a way yeah. that I don't walk into temptation. Mm -hmm. So I'm allowing God to lead me. And so therefore I will not give into my own fleshly temptations because mm -hmm. he's leading me, but deliver us from evil, uh, which the Bible tells us over and over again, that he protects us from the evil one, that mm -hmm. he keeps his own, that he uh, surrounds us. And so the prayer is like, Lord, you know what? Keep the enemy away from me. Yep. I pray these. There's, there's times that I believe that my children are you, that there's spiritual attack. And my prayer is like, Lord, yeah. 
remove anything from my home, give me, protect my family. If I've invited anything in or if I'm not protecting them well, I actually pray and I ask God to reveal that to me mm-hmm. so that my home's protected and that, my, and that I'm giving him authority and him position and everything, right? And so we need to be praying those things. Well, I mean, that wraps up what we were mm. aiming to do here, walking through the Lord's Prayer. And I feel very satisfied and full over everything that we just talked about. How do you feel? Uh, good. And I feel like I, I want to get on your knees and pray. Prayer, yeah. <laughs> um, I really hope that that encouraged you guys. Um, and just a couple more notes on prayer that we wanted to share with you. Um, just a reminder that prayer is such a necessary part of the Christian life. If you claim to know God and follow him as a believer, confessing him as Lord and Savior, mm-hmm. don't be satisfied by the thought that you're good with God. Don't av- don't neglect building an mm-hmm. intimate and personal relationship with him through re- reading his word and through prayer. Yeah, that'd be like us getting married and being like, well, no, we're good. I don't have to talk to you anymore. Yeah, you can live over there in your like, space and I deal? can live over here in my space and do no, all the things. I want to know you, Jennifer, better today than I did t- 13 years ago. Don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, he created you to participate in this intimate relationship with him, giving you the gift of prayer Mm -hmm. as a way of doing that. Um, It's a daily commitment to yielding your heart to God in submission. And it truly will dramatically impact your life for the better. Yeah. As we practice and and just seek him Mm -hmm. and desire to know him. Uh, And I want to speak to parents because we're parents. Uh, It's our responsibility and privilege to teach our children how and when to pray. This is something we try and do often. We give our kids the opportunities to pray. Mm-hmm. We say, what do you want to pray for today? Yeah. And we are, and I actually got in the practice of saying, who do you want to pray for? Because often we say what, mm-hmm. like we, these things that we need, um, but who gets their minds on others? So there, there are, I have to share this. There are times that I am blown away and touched so deeply by my children's prayer. Okay. Oh, our yeah. oldest just turned seven and then four and two. And you guys, they have incredible prayers. Um, like when uh, our son asks God to pour his spirit out over a family. Okay. Yeah. Like he used that phrase and I had to understand it, but I had to it. open my eyes and I had tears in my eyes because it was such a beautiful thing for a young boy to pray. And he does that awesome. because of the example that we have uh, been able to share with him. Um, or like when my daughter notices that I'm not feeling well because of this pregnancy and her natural response is Let me pray a for quick you. response yeah. to pray. Like that is what she knows. That's what she's familiar with. And you know what? A handful of times, you totally like got better quickly yeah. and you tell, it was awesome. Olive, I feel better. Your prayer helped me. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> or she'll ask me, she'll say, mom, do you like right away after she, after she says amen, she goes, she puts her hand on me and goes, mom, do you feel better yet? <laughs> Which is <laughs> so cool sweet. because she's praying with anticipation that God she is, heard She's her looking prayer. for it. Yeah. She's oh, looking for so answers. Sweet. I just had to share that because it fills my heart with so much joy and no child is too small to learn how to go to God in prayer. It's just our responsibility as parents to be sharing that with them. Yeah. So we need to be teaching them how to pray and when to pray. Yeah. Uh, so when they grow up and raise their own families, they can pass on that legacy of faithful prayer and intimacy with God. Yeah. That they, they've they seen it, they've done it and not just done it, but they we, we talk about when God answers prayers mm-hmm. so that they can see it like, wow, God does answer prayers. Yeah. Because uh, he does. Yeah. So this was a really uh, important episode for us to share with you guys. A large part of our ministry online is sharing uh, resources that we created for husbands and wives, Mm -hmm. um, families to pray uh, through just as inspiration for your prayer life, because we, we know what it's like to be in seasons of awesome prayer and then lack. And we just want to encourage you guys that if there, if you've gotten through this episode and you feel like there's uh, lack in your prayer life, like we want to help you. And so want inspiration, we wanted to quickly share with you that we do have these resources available at uh, shop.marriageaftergod.com, but it's 31 prayers for my husband, 31 prayers for my wife. There's short devotionals um, that are written out prayers with journal pages for you to make them personal and make it your own. Mm-hmm. And um, each prayer is a different topic of, yep. you, you know, have, something uh, to pray 31 for. 31 prayers for my son and my daughter. Yeah. And uh, we also have 31 prayers for my future husband and wife mm-hmm. for those that are engaged or dating or waiting. Mm-hmm. And uh, these aren't to replace prayer life at all. No. And we tell that to people all the time. It's to be an inspiration, encouragement, a catalyst. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and people love them. Uh, so we want to get like get those into your hands, shop.marriageaftergod.com. And that's one of the great ways you can actually support this podcast. Yeah. 
and keep it ad free <laughs> yeah. is by picking up some books. So uh, why don't we close in prayer as we always do? Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of prayer. Thank you that even though you know all, you desire us as your children to come to you in prayer. You made a way for us to have direct communication with you again, like the first man did in the garden. You are holy and good and deserve all our prayers, admiration, and honor. We desire to come to you more often in prayer. We pray that we would pray for each other in marriage every day, and we pray we would be diligent to pray for our children. Help us to lead our children in prayer and show them how to do it. May you be honored and glorified through the way we pray and offer our hearts to you in this way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode. We pray that you were encouraged. Uh, have a conversation with your spouse about prayer. And uh, what this, and go read the Lord's Prayer again, and dig in for yourself, and just try and glean from it uh, what Jesus has for you. And uh, we love you, and we're praying for you, and we look forward to having you next week. Did you enjoy today's show? If you did, it would mean the world to us if you could leave us a review on iTunes. Also, if you're interested, you can find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com, and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. 